Oh, okay. I, I can also see my screen share. Okay, so uh, my colleague is still trying to connect and I will start uh, for the first part for now. Uh, and I will be uh, keep checking with him whether he got connected and uh, uh, for the second part. Okay, so uh, welcome to our session. In this session, uh, I we will introduce the latest status of uh, big data open source ecosystem for uh, ARM data centers. Uh, first of all, uh, please let me uh, introduce us. My name is Zheng Yu Zheng. Uh, I'm from Huawei Technology. And currently, currently, I'm focusing on the expanding the open source ecosystem of ARM data centers. And uh, together with me is my colleague, Sheng Liu. Uh, he is currently focused on big data software enablement and turning on ARM data centers. OK, uh, let's, uh, let's get to in the content of this session. Uh, in this session, we will cover three parts. In the first part, I will give a brief overview about the ARM data center open source ecosystems. And after that, uh, my colleague Sheng Liu will share some detailed, detailed insights about our journey of making Hadoop available on ARM. And uh, uh, he has some uh, uh, detailed information about our tests uh, that has been done. Uh, that shows how ARM um, data center can be used for big data. Uh, let's get to the first part, ARM um, data center uh, open source ecosystem overview. Okay, first of all, I want to point out why do we want to do this at the first place. Uh, I believe everyone that uh, will be shocked by the, how fast the IT industry uh, it, Evoluted in the recent decades, uh, in the 80s and 90s, uh, 90s. Uh, the PC, in the PC internet era, data center uses mainframe architecture and uh, computer, and uh, PC are just about to uh, get into everyone's home. And during that time, sending and receiving emails is the coolest thing. So we don't have much computing power demands. Uh, and the next boom starts at the first decades of 21st century, especially uh, when 3G was invented. Everyone starts to use smartphone, and with the help of all kinds of open source creations, x86 uh, architecture uh, servers occupy the data center market with its high cost efficiency. We have now entered a brand new era. Uh, the intelligent era. Everyone is talking about 5G, cloud, AI, and IoT. Everything is now connected. And all this boom and new use cases brings much more computing power demands. And for those com computer power demands, uh, not, not a single computing architecture can cover them all. For example, most smartphones and IoT devices are in ARM architecture, and uh, GPU is much faster for uh, AI applications. So uh, in the new era, we uh, maybe uh, we made some bottlenecks uh, in our new, uh, applications. Uh, maybe if we involve a new kinds of uh, hardware, the problem can be easily solved, just like the uh, GPU and the AI thing. So uh, in this uh, new era, we must make the most use of uh, diverse, diversified computing uh, devices, uh, which it could be the best solution. And that's why we are trying to uh, enable uh, computing, uh, enable uh, big data applications on ARM devices, because this might provide a new solution 
for some of the bottleneck applications uh, that we are facing now. Uh, and when we talk about the ecosystem or enablement of some hardware, we talk about the full software stack above them. For example, during our enablement work uh, for big data software, we also have enabled a lot of underneath requirements like Netty. Uh, actually, we have already covered many, for, uh, many famous open source projects. Uh, the graph on the right gives some of them. Uh, we can see that uh, we have done works from OS and basic libraries like uh, glibc, OpenSSL to famous platform of, uh, for the cloud era like KVM, Libert, OpenStack, uh, Kubernetes. And we have also covered applications that uh, users may directly use uh, like uh, big data, web, AI, and databases. And uh, uh, when we define uh, the enablement of uh, an open uh, an architecture, uh, we uh, usually uh, we define uh, two steps for the whole work. The first step is enablement, means that the software can run on this platform. Uh, on ARM hardware, uh, for example, on ARM hardware, we will also uh, add ARM CI to the upstream development pipeline. This will ensure long-time uh, ARM enablement for the development action in this project. Um, and the final task for this step is to let the community provide ARM platform releases, make user much easier to use the software. And uh, the next step is to, uh, the next step, step two, is to make the uh, platform more competitive. In this step, we will propose to uh, enhance the future based on, I mean, uh, based on uh, the hardware architectures to unleash the potential di uh, of diversified computing. So uh, for the first step, we have pushed the upstream to uh, add ARM CI, and this is the current status. Uh, I think most of the attendees will know that the most uh, in most open source communities, the CI pipeline, the CI pipeline mostly run on x86 hardwares, and the outcome is uh, also x86 packages. So for ARM users, uh, they may need extra works to extra works to make the package able to run on uh, ARM platforms. And what we have done is to propose uh, add ARM CI pipelines to open source communities. Uh, the new uh, pipeline shares the scripts and the test cases with the existing x86 pip CI pipeline. Uh, uh, after that, we will provide end-to-end development pipeline on ARM platform, and this will make ARM user the first class citizen. So uh, using the above mentioned method, uh, we have enabled the most famous big data open source projects on ARM platforms. Uh, for example, uh, we have enabled Hadoop uh, for uh, in this area. Hadoop, uh, we have added ARM CI to the trunk branch uh, with a daily build, and we will send test results to the uh, mailing list. Uh, the CI runs to over 24,000 test cases, and the uh, community has claimed ARM support after 3.3.0 after release. And we have also added ARM CI to the Spark community. It also runs on master branch with uh, daily build. Uh, it runs over uh, 25,000 test cases uh, covering Java, Scala, and Apache programming languages. And uh, the community has also uh, claimed ARM support after 3.0.0 uh, release. Uh, it's, uh, the, the situation is the same for HBase, Hive, Flink, and Kudu. Um, 
So uh, I believe the about uh, so uh, that's the uh, current status uh, uh, of uh, big data error. So uh, I believe the above content provides a good overview of why we are doing this and what we have done uh, in the big data area from the from a overview point of view. So now I will hand the Mac over to my colleague Sheng Liu. He will share more detailed information about how this was done and uh, he will share some latest test results we have done uh, about this. Okay, so Liu Sheng, uh, have you connected? Hello? Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, please, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I think you can start your second part. Uh, I will share. Okay. Uh, I will sh share a slide for you. Uh, okay, thanks for Jamie's introduction. Uh, now, please let me introduce more detailed insights about the uh, journey of Hadoop Arms Pod. Okay, next, please. Uh, uh, now, let's uh, take a look at the journey of Hadoop Arm support. First, we have added uh, an uh, uh, Jira issue for adding Arm CI <coughs> uh, for Hadoop to start, to start a discussion of Arm support in Hadoop. Uh, Community, uh, uh, one year ago, we have also talked uh, uh, in Hadoop Develop mail list and, and got uh, many contributors' uh, positive opinions. Uh, in August uh, 2019, we have also presented a uh, topic about uh, Hadoop AMP support in Hadoop Community Meetup in Beijing during the meetup. We have introduced our efforts on ARM uh, support in Hadoop community and introduced the uh, advantages of ARM's results adoption. Well, there are also some other companies who are also interested in ARM support. Uh, and then we have discussed the purpose and the plan of ARM support uh, in Hadoop online online community think the first important step is building an ARM CI system for Hadoop community, which is a guarantee for ARM supporting Hadoop community in continual development. Uh, after debugging and fix many test failures, we have fixed all the test case failures for specific ARM platform. Uh, uh, finally, we have successfully built the ARM CI and integrated into the Hadoop community. Uh, in July 2020, Hadoop community issued the 3.30 release, which is the first release uh, includes the uh, ARM platform packages. Uh, okay, next. Uh, Hi, Jamie. Hi. Already in the next page. Hi. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, besides the um, important events in journey of Hadoop arm spot, uh, you may also want to ask uh, what we have done in Hadoop itself. Uh, okay, let's uh, look at some important issues we have fixed when promoting arm spot in Hadoop. Uh, first one, the protocol bus. As we know, Hadoop previously used the proto protocol um, bus of version 2.5.0, which is not support for ARM platform. Uh, the protocol bus support uh, platform since 3.7.1 in Hadoop uh, version. So we propose to upgrade the version uh, of protocol buff in Hadoop to version 3.7.1. It is not only symbol, symbolic, 
changing the version number, but also need to modify many code while using protocol buff because there are some incompatibility issues with the old version. <clears throat> Uh, okay, the gRPC Java, uh, the Hadoop use the gRPC Java of uh, of one point uh, one point fifty one, which is also uh, which is also not support the ARM platform. So we have also. Uh, we have we, we have we have tried to promote it in gRPC Java itself for community to uh, support ARM platform as the first step, and then we have we, we also uh, pro promote the gRPC Java community to publish uh, new the new one point twenty six point zero version. Uh, and then we have also promote to Hadoop community to upgrade the dependency of GRPC Java version to the newest version to support ARM platform. <clears throat> uh, for the network DB thing, uh, it is a similar issue with uh, with the GRPC Java. Uh, uh, the the old version of Java DB GI is also not support the, the ARM platform. So we we, <coughs> we have also tried to promote uh, the Nav DB GI community to uh, support uh, ARM platform. We have made the uh, and then promote the Nav DB GI community to to publish the new version. <coughs> And then promote Hadoop to upgrade to apply the new version to support the uh, ARM platform. Uh, for the native support, native dependency, uh, Hadoop, Hadoop dependence the native of version Uh, 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 older version which is not also supported for the ARM platform. So we have we, we have tried to uh, develop the developing native community to support ARM platform and then upgrade the net native to 4.150 version in Hadoop. Uh, according to above issues, you can see the main issues of Hadoop ARM support is mostly related, related with its dependencies. That is because Hadoop is uh, mainly writing in Java. Java is a cross architecture language. So most issues are native libraries related. Uh, after fixing fixed many issues like above mentioned, uh, we have proposed to add a Docker file for ARM platform in Hadoop uh, develop support tools, which make ARM support of Hadoop can be verified uh, out of the box. Okay, next page. Uh, after building after building the ARM CR for Hadoop community, the ARM CR itself also help us to find some issues about uh, different architectures. Uh, here is an exa uh, interesting example. When running the ARM CR, we found there are uh, mass related test failures. After debugging, we found the method of mass uh, and the strict mass in as 86 server are different, but in uh, in ARM server they are same. The root cause is the method of mass cause the default uh, implementation. Uh, implementation. 
each are can provide already the implementation. The x86 platform has the ASM uh, implementation for performance optimization. But uh, the value is not uh, accurate uh, after 16 digits. Uh, well, for ARM platform, the implementation is uh, different and the calculating value is accurate. Okay. So we have talked about the ARM platform adoption in Hadoop, which means the Hadoop now can run on ARM servers. But uh, can we ship our Hadoop workloads to ARM servers in a real cluster? Maybe we need to think about the performance, the costs, uh, and the deployment uh, issues. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, firstly, we have done many benchmarks to verify the Hadoop cluster based on ARM servers and found the Hadoop could see libraries as uh, important uh, factors of the performance when compare performance on ARM and uh, x86 servers. The could see compression and decompression performs important rules in Hadoop memory reduce the process. There are five compression steps and uh, four decompression step at most in the whole map reduce process. Uh, first one, the input data are compressed and, the, and then if the data is compressed, we need to decompress the input data before map task. Uh, and then we, uh, and then the map reduce uh, process will compress the immediate data of the map task outputs. Uh, and then the compress the spill outputs and merge them, then compress it. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then it will decompress outputs of map tasks, and then merge. Uh, before the reduce task, it will decompress the, the output data from map task. Finally, the compress the outputs of reduced task can also be configured to be compressed. Okay, next. Uh, so Hadoop could say is the key point we want to improve in the performance. About uh, could say libraries, we have done many optimizations in commonly used uh, the STD. Snappy ZLib libraries. For the STD, we have promoted uh, improvements by leveraging a uh, profession mechanism and applying the ON instructs, which makes the performance in comparisons about 3.3% uh, up and 13% uh, uh, performance up in decompression. Uh, for Snappy, we have done similar modifications and made the uh, ten, about a 10% uh, performance up in compression and 9% uh, uh, performance up in decompression. Especially as we use the Huawei Quimpeng processor as uh, uh, ARM hardware, which provided uh, uh, hardware accelerated uh, limb KE which can be used to improve the ZDIP performance with its hardware capability. Uh, after enabled the KE in ZDIP, we have got more than uh, 30 times per performance, uh, performance improvement in compression and uh, more than uh, seven times performance improvement in decompression. Okay. Uh, after doing the optimization in Snappy ZLib, we have also compared the Hadoop workloads performance with different codes enabled. Uh, we use the TerraSort benchmark suit as the testing tool. When we enable the KAE in ZLib, 
we got about uh, 14 14 percent performance improvement uh, and when we applied our optimized uh, snappy we got about uh, 10 percent performance improvement uh, according to the table you can see in different phase of map reduce the optimized uh, snappy and the Z -lib with ke enabled it always uh, had a better performance uh, uh, than the original neighbor race. Okay, next. Uh, we have also tested uh, and compared the performance with the same specification between ARM hardware and uh, x86 hardware. Uh, the testing environment uh, we have used uh, uh, one node uh, one node cluster with uh, uh, 32, 32 vCPU and uh, uh, 64 GB memories, uh, and we tested with the TerraSort uh, te uh, benchmark suit uh, with uh, 50 GB data. Uh, when testing with no code C, Snap enabled and ZLIP enabled, ARM server is uh, better, is better lower in performance compared to S86. Uh, as you can see, the uh, it's not a big uh, big gap between the ARM um, server and the x86. Well, we cannot ignore. Generally, the ARM ARM resources are much cheaper than x86 resources in same specification. In the table, you can see we have simply compared the cost of ARM resources in Huawei Cloud, uh, AWS, Packet Cloud. The pros the pro price of the ARM is about 20% uh, uh, to 40% cheaper than S86 in same specification. Okay. Uh, generally, our Hadoop cluster are running on S86 servers. Uh, if we want to try ARM servers in Hadoop cluster, we may not want, we may don't want to move all the workloads to ARM servers. So, can we scale up our S86 with ARM servers? The answer is yes. We have verified the ARM and uh, S86 mixed uh, deployment. Uh, Hadoop workers can be deployed uh, on uh, uh, ARM servers as same as uh, as x86 servers. We can also deploy uh, ARM and uh, x86 servers in different partitions with the node neighbor mechanism of Hadoop. By using the Hadoop node neighbor mechanism, the ori uh, original workloads can be continued to run in default partitions uh, as former. A new added uh, at, uh, um, node can be smoothly extended to cluster as a specific uh, um, partition. Uh, operators can adjust the workload to different partitions according to the workloads tab to take different uh, advantage of ARM and x86. Okay, next. Uh, this picture is our deploy, deployment uh, practice. We have a cluster with uh, a controller and uh, three workers running on ARM and three workers running on x86. Uh, we, we have verified the fun functionalities of different scenarios by running the TerraSort word count applications, uh, all the te testing can be successfully run. Okay, next.
So in previous slides, we have talked about uh, what we have done about uh, Hadoop ARM support in different uh, perspectives. Uh, the ARM CI, ARM release, performance testing, and uh, compression. Um, mixed uh, deployment practice. Now let's take a conclusion. Um, in performance testing, we have proved that the performance of Hadoop in ARM cluster is basically equal to uh, x86 when no code C library enabled. And because we have done uh, many improvements in Snappy when Snappy could see enabled. It also got a similar performance of Hadoop in um, compared to x86. Uh, when Zlib could see enabled in Hadoop process, the performance of ARM, of ARM is uh, about, uh, about 12% lower than x86, but uh, it will become 20% 20, 20 higher when we enable the hardware acceleration. Uh, ARM, ARM results generally 20% uh, to 40% cheaper than the x86 uh, results in same specification. Uh, we have also verified that the ARM workloads can be smoothly shipped to ARM loads. Uh, ARM and the x86 uh, mixed deployment, uh, we, have all, we, we, we have also verified the performance are uh, in similar level compared to the type of hardware, uh, di different hard type of hardware deployment uh, and uh, has more advantages in cost. Okay. Okay, thank you, and uh, okay. he, uh, thanks for Liushan. And here is uh, we have some Slack channel created for uh, discussions. And if you are interested, you can scan for the this QR code to join the Slack channel uh, to for discussions. And uh, we have we will also share uh, latest status uh, of. Uh, other fields like uh, web and uh, uh, AI and other stuff, the so, ARM um, ecosystem status. And uh, today we have just shared some basic information about uh, how uh, can ARM be used in the uh, big data area, uh, especially on Hadoop and uh, more detailed, uh, technical details will be shared uh, on October the 2nd, uh, Liu Sheng and uh, uh, our other colleague, Bene, will share more technical details and welcome to uh, listen to their sessions too. Okay, thank you.